So last, the last few weeks, we've been talking about Miriam, the sister of Moses, who um, was an amazing, amazing woman. And like, I think that we don't really know so much about her because we sort of like go over the whole story, but we don't really delve into who she was as a person. And we talked about how the thing that Miriam really taught us was how to really have faith in Hashem. And please, everybody, feel free to, free to, feel free to eat. But she really had, um, she really had faith in Hashem. And every time something went wrong, even from when she was a little girl, like six years old, she just had faith in Hashem. When like everybody was being beaten and, and hurt, she's the one that said, and I'm just repeating, I'm just reviewing from last time. She's the one that kept on saying, no, I'm telling you like Hashem is going to take us out of Egypt, but it's been like over 200 years. Hashem's not taking us out. It's kind of like what we're in now. Like, no, Hashem's not taking us out. Like, when are we going to be out of this Corona? Like, when are we going to get out of this? Like, we're not, we feel like we're always stuck in it, but no, Hashem, the women are the ones that hold strong and say, no, it's coming. It's happening. We have to be, stay positive. We have to, we have to see the good in this. We have to see Hashem in this. There's, we have to find Hashem in every little picture. And Miriam was the one that taught us that to the point where I said last week, which I thought was like, I said it the last two weeks, I said, hi, Tanya. Hi. The last two weeks, I said, Miriam was a six-year-old girl and she, she told her parents, guys, don't get divorced. You have to, you have, to have a baby. What if, what if you would have Moshe? What if you would have the, the leader of the Jewish people? You're worse than, than Pharaoh because not only is Pharaoh killing, Pharaoh's killing the boys but you're killing the girls and the boys because you're not having any children because you're, you're divorced. So he, she said, no, 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 you have to get together. And I promise you, Hashem is going to give you the leader. She had like this prophecy, this nubuah at six years old. And her parents were like, what are you talking about? And again, her parents had the baby. They were so excited. They got together again. They got remarried. They had the baby. They were so excited. The baby brought so much light into their home and they were so happy. And they were like looking at the baby, looking at Miriam. They come over to Miriam, they kiss her on the forehead and they say, thank you, Miriam, for giving us such hope. We love this baby. She's bringing so much light into our home. And then fast forward a few months later when Pharaoh is like, that's it. What's going on with the Jewish boys? Why aren't they being, why are they being born? I told you to kill them before they're born. What's going on? And he goes and he sends his army, he sends his, his troops out to every Jewish home to check out to see if they have any baby boys. So Yocheved and Amram, Moses is, uh, uh, hi Bella, Moses is uh, parents, hi. says, um, um, you know, what are we going to do? We have to take Moses and we have to take him out and, and hide him. So she, they hide him and they're freaking out. They're like, what this light, this beautiful joy that we have is now nothing. Like what, like he's going to die in the Nile River. Like, how can we just like let him go? And they slap the Taurus of the Talmud said that they slap Miriam, their little girl they slap her across the face and they say now what what do you what, what where's your prophecy now could you imagine how powerful that is and she stands by the water and this is where i want to continue on and i'll just take out some messages from here um and we can go into the into the pasuka and the the actual humash actual torah but i just wanted to get this beautiful idea that we that miriam was was standing by the water right we said and she was like had so much hope in moshe she was so in her brother Moses, she was like, I know this is going to come true. And she stood by the water and waited to see how Hashem is going to play this out. She wasn't like she was like, oh my gosh, is he going to die or not? Because like, why would she stand by and watch her baby brother die? She's not going to stand there. She was standing there just to see how Hashem is playing out this puzzle. Like, what is, what's Hashem's plan here? And she waited and she, and she, then she's all of a sudden she sees the, an Egyptian coming, Hitler, Hitler's daughter coming and get trying to, and trying to get, you know, bathe. And all of a sudden Moses is right there screaming and crying. And she's like, oh my gosh, how is this going to play out? What is Hashem doing here? And she sees, and she goes over, she has the, the guts to go over to ba Baya and say, I see that you're sort of like toying with this. You're having a hard time with the baby. I see that you want to take the baby home, but he's not stopping to cry. So maybe I can help you and get a nurse. And he, and she gets her mother who's has milk and can nurse her own baby brother. She's like so, so smart in this way, but she's so brave. You know why she's so brave? Because she had faith in Hashem. She believed that Hashem was going to, God was going to help her in this issue because she believed so much that Moses was going to be saved by Hashem. She didn't know how, but she knew that it was going to happen. And she really believed and she waited there. And then fast forward a little bit and Mo Miriam is there talking bad about her brother Moses. And, then, and this is where we're sort of up to, right? Miriam 
the one that, that, that raised Moses, that cared about him literally on her knees. Like she would go into the palace every single day with her mother and play with the baby. She was like, sort of like a nanny. And they were paid to nurse their own son and brother and take care of their own brother. You know, like they, it was like a, such a hidden secret. Like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, she got her own mother to, to nurse the baby. And, um, and Miriam is, is, is so, so unbelievable here. But then again, she's speaking badly about her brother. So it's like, wait, she's talking badly about her brother, but it really wasn't like, if you, if you think about it, like Miriam loved her brother so much. So was it that bad? And Hashem is telling us, the Torah is telling us, yes, even your own brother, you can't speak Lashon Hara about. You can't analyze your own mom. You can't analyze your own family members because it's Lashon Hara. You're not allowed to speak badly about your own family even. Even if you think, I know exactly what the, what's going on with them. They're from the same upbringing as I am. I have the same parents. We have the same siblings. We all grew up together. It's not the same. And every single person is different. Every single person is in their own shoes, even if they're your family. And you can't speak badly about them. And this is where we're up to. What happens? Hashem heard. We said by Yishma Hashem, Hashem heard them speaking badly, Miriam and Aaron. They were both speaking badly about Moses, their brother. And Hashem heard, and he is very angry. I'm just going to close my WhatsApp. He's very angry. And it says in the Pasuk, and it says in the, in the Chumash, in the Torah, it says, Vayichar af Hashem, and Hashem was very angry, like, Vayichar af, af is a nose, it's like, you know, like when you're angry and your nose is like flaring, Hashem was angry, Hashem was so angry at them because they were speaking Lashon Hara about their own brother, and it wasn't like they were opening, like we said, it wasn't like they opened up a blog on Facebook and like said a whole thing, it was like they were just talking to each other to try to figure out how they can help him, why is he leaving his wife, what's going on here, why is Moshe doing this, and Hashem was very angry, Vayishma Hashem, and Hashem heard, and Hashem sticks up for Moshe. It's an unbelievable relationship that Moses has with, with Hashem. Like Hashem actually sticks up for him and says, no, you know, Moses, Moses actually did the right thing. I'm the one that told him to leave his wife. You know why I told him to leave his wife? And this is like, I don't know if you know this, everybody, but when a prophet has prophecy, it usually happens like in a dream or like in a riddle. And they have this like sixth sense or this like, like intuition, I guess, of like being able to decipher and to understand what Hashem is trying, this message that Hashem is trying to teach them. But, and that's what happened with Miriam, the prophet. She had a prophecy and she was able to decipher and to figure out what Hashem was trying to message. But with, with Moshe, and we see in the Pasuk straight out, Hashem, when Hashem defends Moshe, which is such a beautiful relationship, he says, he's my servant. He, he's literally talking to me, pet el pet, it says mouth to mouth. I don't just like give him a, come to him in a dream. I don't come to him in a riddle. I come to him and I have a conversation. It's like, hey, Moshe, hey, how are you, Hashem? How are you doing? It's like a combo. They have like a real conversation here. It's like real. And I don't talk to him. I know that you're from the same family, but I don't talk to him the same way I talk to you. So I told him that he has to leave his wife. You know why? Because when I speak to you, I tell you, I give you warning. Hey, I'm coming. I'm, I'm about to start coming and speaking to you. One second, let me just, oh. I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm about to start coming to speak to you. So just, you know, get ready, purify yourself, go to the mikvah, separate yourself, you know, like get ready, be in the mind frame of talking to God. But with Moshe, I don't do that. I talk to him pet el pet. I'm like constantly talking to him. It's like suddenly. And how does, Mo, how does Hashem tell them? show them this, this idea, Hashem suddenly, by Shema Hashem, Hashem heard Mo, Miriam and Aaron talking to each other about Moses, about him leaving his wife because he has prophecy. And they're like, why is he leaving his wife? We don't leave our wives. We don't leave our, our husbands. We don't leave our family. Why is he leaving? Hashem heard them say that. And Hashem, all of a sudden, it says, Pitaom. Hashem suddenly came to them. It wasn't like the normal way that Hashem usually comes to them. Hashem usually comes to them in a dream or in a riddle. But this time Hashem suddenly came to them the way he comes to Moshe, just to show them suddenly I'm coming. This is how I talk to Moshe. And all of a sudden Miriam at Rashi said that Miriam and Aaron were like, quick, quick, where's the Mayim, 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 we need Mayim. We need water, we need to purify ourselves. Quick, quick, Hashem is here. Oh my gosh, like they're all flustered. Like Hashem is here. We have to like talk to God. 
and they're all flustered. Hashem is proving to them, you see, it's not so easy. It's, you can't just, you can't just be in a, your regular daily life. You always have to be on. You always have to be pure. You always have to be on to talk to me. And Moses needs to do that because he is the leader of the, of the Jewish people and he needs to be in that state right now for the Jewish people. And you can't judge him for that. But what's so beautiful is that be, before Hashem talks to them, when he says, he suddenly came to them, the pasuk says, the, the verse says, Shimuna. You see, remember that he was angry, right? He was angry. Hashem was very angry at them. But it says, Shimuna, please listen. Listen to me. Could you imagine? I feel like, you know, this is like, we always say, Hamalami Torah la Amo Yisrael. Hashem is the teacher of the Jewish people. We learn from Hashem how to be. And this is like parenting 101. You're angry. You're mad. You're upset. This is what relationship 101. Shimuna, please listen. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk nicely. I don't care how angry you are. Talk nicely, speak nicely. And that's what Hashem does. Could you imagine like Hashem is so angry and yet he talks on their level. Shemunah, listen, you could still be angry because after that verse, it says Hashem, Hashem was angry and he left. But in that moment that he was talking to them, he spoke to them softly. He didn't scream at them. He didn't yell at them. Your kid is like spilling something on the floor and you're like, what are you doing? There's a way to talk, even when you're freaking out. I remember yesterday, not that it doesn't happen every single day, but just yesterday, my son, I think we have to order Amazon, uh, from Amazon, we have to order some locks on our cabinets, but my son opens up the cabinets a lot. And he, and I'm like, you know, oh, I'm gonna be organized, I'm so great. I took all my cereal and I put them into like, you know, containers and everything. So now it's like easy access, you could pull out the container. So he pulled out the container, not to Cheerios, which would be nice because it was bigger, but to Rice Krispies. And he took the whole thing and he was like, oh, cool. And as I'm running, you know, in my huge humongous house, I'm like running and it's taking me, it's like miles away to get to him. Of course, almost the entire um, container is out. So I have to sweep it up and throw it out. But it's like, you just want to be like, ah! but in that moment, like to just be like, okay, you're going to get a broom, you know? Shimuna, listen to me. Like, Get to their age, get to their, 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 their level and talk to them and speak to them. This is what Hashem teaches us. Even in your angry moments with your husband, with your spouses, with your children, with your work, with people that you're working with, talk nicely, speak nicely. Shemuna. So that's like the message that we learn through Miriam. Miriam is teaching us what it means to have a relationship with Hashem. And then... Another aspect of Miriam, which is really connected to what we were just saying, how Miriam was with the water. You know what Miriam means? Maryam, the water was bitter. So it's like an interesting thing. Like my daughter's name is Miriam. I yell at Miriam. She's always like, oh, my name. I hate my name, Miriam. Like it's such a bitter water. Like it's so bad, you know? But that was the whole beauty of Miriam, that she took the bitter waters and she made them sweet. She took like the most terrible moments in our life and she made it sweet. And she said, no, we're going to come out of this. We're going to get through this together. So what happens? And I'm just going to go through the story very quickly. And you'll tell me if I'm like, you could stop me, by the way. Anybody have any questions or anything to add? Um, if I'm going too fast or if you're not familiar with the story, I'll, I'm going to go through it um, as quickly as possible. So it's not like it's dragging on. But OK. Sorry, can I just ask you a quick question? Yes. So, so um, who, when did Hashem say that you actually have to be purified with water? Like, was it, because it seemed like Hashem was, I don't know. It just seems like it, it was sort of like, a, yeah, it seems like everybody's sort of like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we need to like purify ourselves. Like, right. what, like at what point did Hashem say, whenever you, you get close to me in any way, or I speak to you, you must be, you know, a good question. I'm not sure exactly where it starts from. I can look it up. I'm going to look into that. Okay. If anybody knows, I can add that. Um, but I know that we see over here that there was definitely like when people say like you go to the mikvah, it, it like, you know, going to the mikvah really connects you to our mothers from before. This is like, you see Miriam and Aaron are like going to the mikvah. Like they need to go to the mikvah to purify themselves. 
I don't like to use the word purified because like, I don't know, like, what does that even mean? I just like, I guess like to separate and to like re rebirth ourselves, you know, like it's like, this is how we are in our womb and we sort of like are reborn. So at that moment, she's like, needs to like get, come to a new place, a new headspace, a new, new, new uh, mind frame um, in order to speak to Hashem. So I could look it up and see when it's exactly the first time we see the water, but um, it's a good question. I'm not sure exactly the first time, but I see over here. Um, okay, so what happens with Miriam? Every single time the Jewish people are lacking water, Miriam is like somewhere in the picture. And you kind of wonder why, why is Miriam and water, like what does Miriam and water have to do? Obviously it has to do with it because her name is Miriam, but like, and it means water, Yam is water, is like, a, like an ocean of water, like more than just water. But what was Miriam? What, what, did Mary, what does Miriam have to do with water? So I'll tell you that after the Jewish people, this is such a beautiful thing, I love this so much. But at, this is exactly who Miriam was. When Miriam was, when they were going out of Egypt, Miriam was the one that said, you know, we're gonna be out, we're gonna be out, we're gonna be getting out. And now we're in, we're, we're, we're going, about to go through the Yom stuff, about to go through the, the, the splitting of the sea, the whole splitting of the sea happens, right? And the, the, the Jewish people are leaving Egypt and all of a sudden they look behind them and there's not like just one daughter of, the, of, the, of Hitler, one Nazi, there's like thousands of Nazis behind them. Like the whole entire Egyptian army is behind them. And all the Jewish people are there, not just one little baby Moses. It's like everybody is there and they're looking behind them and the, the Egyptians are running after them and they're like, oh my gosh, the water is raging and I don't know how to do this. And there's reeds everywhere, right? Moses was in a reed and now the Jewish people are all in reeds. There's like reeds everywhere and they don't know where to go, what to do, which, which, which direction, they're panicking. And Miriam is right there. And what does Miriam do? Miriam is holding her tambourine and she tells all the women before they leave Egypt, take your matzah, yeah. Yeah, take your, take your bread but you know what else you should take? Take your tambourines, take your musical instruments because soon we're gonna be singing to Hashem, to thank Hashem for all that he has done for us. They're all in Egypt and we think they're so, they're so in that suffering mindset and she's like, don't forget to pack your tambourines. <laughs> like, forget about your canteens, forget about the food, like, like a real Jewish mama, no, 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 no. Miriam is like, pack your tambourines. To pack your pack your musical instruments and the men didn't the men didn't believe it the the women are the ones that believed it they were like okay we're packing our tambourines we're getting ready for a musical a musical uh the whole i don't know what you want to call it they're going to be singing to god thanking hashem praising hashem for what he's done for us and he um and 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 they go and they're and they go through the water right and they have to jump in the water that whole story that happens we all saw the movie they jump into the water and the water splits for them, right? Only why finally when it gets up to their neck, that's when it gets, that's when it splits. Like they really have to believe to like the last moment. They really have to believe. Like they jump in and they're like, ah, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Boom, the water splits. And then Miriam sings Tasham. Like everybody's saying, they all sang Az Yashir. They all, the whole Jewish people, the men, the women, the children, everybody sang Az Yashir. Everybody sang a beautiful song to Hashem. And then once they're done, Miriam says, uh, 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 now it's the ladies' turn. Ladies, get your tambourines out. And she starts to sing and dance. And she thanks Hashem. Like, what was going on here? Why does Miriam have to sing to Hashem? We just sang, we all sang. The, the song with everybody else is not good enough for you, Miriam. But Miriam says, no, 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 no. I need to have my own song. The women need to have their own song because we knew what it meant to really believe in Hashem. We believed in Hashem even in the darkest of moments. We're the ones that went over to her husbands and said, hey, look at me, I'm beautiful. You're, you're a man, you're not a woman, you're a man. You, believe, you, you have feelings for me. You still wanna be with me even though they're making you suffer and they're beating you down. You still have feelings for me. The women are the ones that did that. So we're the ones that need to really sing. We have to have our own separate song. And so they sing and they are singing this beautiful song. And then the Torah says, Three days later, their canteen runs out. You can imagine, like it makes sense, right? No more water. And the Jewish people are panicking. There's no more water. 
oh my gosh, we're, we're dying here. You took us out of Egypt to die over here? Like we might as well have died in a place that we were comfortable. We had our homes there. We had our families. We had our whole life there for years, for hundreds of years. You took us out to die. They're like complaining to Moses. Right directly after this whole song of Miriam, they just don't get the message. They just don't believe. They just don't say like, Hashem, can you help us get, get some water? They start freaking out. You took us out of here to die. What's wrong with you, Moses? Why are you doing this? And Moses starts to panic, but Miriam is by her side. Miriam is by her, by her side. And the water is bitter and disgusting and they can't even drink it. It's disgusting. They can't even, like, they can't even swallow the water. And what happens? They Moses takes a stick, like Hashem told him to, and he throws it into the water. And all of a sudden, it's like magic. The water becomes sweet. The water becomes sweet. And the Jewish people are so grateful to Miriam and to Moshe for teaching us. Yes, oh yes, I remember Miriam's message. Miriam's message is to always believe in Hashem. We have to always remember to believe in Hashem. And then we're gonna fast forward to when Miriam dies. And by the way, I mentioned this last time that Miriam is one of the only, there's only a few people in the Torah that die with the nishika of Hashem, the, the, the kiss of Hashem. Some people die because they got sick or some people die because Hashem took them away. But some people that were like on the top, top level, they couldn't even die. Like they were so like in sync, their neshama, their soul and their body were so in sync. There was like no reason to take them out. Like they were so perfect in this world. They just got the message. And Miriam was one of those people that when Miriam died, Hashem kissed her on the lips and that's how he was able to take her out of this world. Just such a beautiful relationship that they had. When Miriam dies, it says, but Thomas Miriam, Miriam dies. And then the next verse, right after that, panic. The Jewish people are freaking out. There's no water. There's no water. They're freaking out. I, I'm just confused. Like, wh what does that have to do with Miriam dying? Like, Miriam dies, and then all of a sudden, there's no water. What does it have to do with Miriam, right? Good question. Miriam dies, and there's no water. What did you say, Jen? Because the the water came from the well of Miriam. Like it right, was linked exactly, to her. exactly. And you know how you know that? Because in this Pasuk, Rashi, the commentary said, commentator says that when, when the Jewish people were in Rafidim, were in um, another place where they didn't have water, Hash Moshe took a stick, like Moshe had, like Hashem said, Moshe took a stick and hit the rock and water, like springs of water just came flowing out. And Rashi says that, you know why they had springs of water? It was because of the merit of Miriam, the zechut of Miriam, because of the merit of Miriam, because of what Miriam did for the Jewish people, because she taught them what faith was, that's why they had water. And for 40 years, they had water. And Rashi says it right here, when Miriam dies, all of a sudden there's no water because Miriam's well is gone. For all these years, there's no complaining of water. There was water, water, water for 40 years because that rock was like a well of water and it, it, it provided water for the, all the Jewish people, thousands and thousands of Jewish people, hundreds of thousands of Jewish people, a million, I think it was 1.2 million Jews. They had water for everybody from Air Miriam, from the well of Miriam. And all of a sudden Miriam dies. And you would think that the Jewish people would be like crying, mourning. You'd think the next pasuk, the next verse would say, the Jewish people were crying, like Miriam died. Like this was like the one that brought us out of Egypt that sang and gave us hope. But no, what do they do? They start panicking. Oh my gosh, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. We're we need water, we're, we're thirsty. What are we gonna do? We need water. They're freaking out, they're panicking again. And Moshe, Moses and Aaron, they're her own, their own, uh, Miriam's brothers couldn't even mourn her, but Hashem gives them a beautiful gift. You know what Hashem gives them? Hashem gives them no water. Why does Hashem give them no water? Because Hashem is trying to give Moshe and Aaron some ability to mourn properly. He says, you don't have time to mourn because all the Jewish people are complaining, but you know what you have time for? to take the lessons that Miriam taught you and to use them now. That's how you mourn. 
to take the lessons that the person teaches us when they, when they die and to use them. And that's how you really, really mourn, to take their lessons and to live with them. And now, right after Mo Miriam dies, all of a sudden there's no water. Hashem's giving them the opportunity to remember what Miriam taught them. Miriam taught us how to connect with Hashem. Talk to me, communicate, ask me. Let's have a relationship here. Believe in me, I'm gonna take care of you. I took care of you till now. You had man, you had, you had mana, you had food, you had water. What, remember what Miriam taught you, have faith in me. I've taken care of you. I did all the makos. I did all the plagues for you. I split the sea for you. I took you out. Remember me? Remember our relationship? But what happens? Hashem tells Moshe this time, no, 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 don't hit the rock. Speak to the rock. Well, he doesn't say don't hit the rock. He just says speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. And what's going to happen? Water will come out. What happened last time? He says, Moshe, hit the rock. And water will come out. And what happened? Moshe hit the rock and water came out. What happened to that time before? The water was bitter and Moshe threw the, threw the stick into the water. Like Hashem said, throw the stick into the water. The water will become, will become uh, sweet. So what happens now? Hashem says, Moshe, Moses, speak to the rock. Talk to it. Have a, com have a conversation with the rock. But Moshe's panicking and everybody behind him, he's like the rabbi of the community here, you know? He's getting all the brunt of everything. Like, what's wrong with you? You took us out. And Moshe's like, I'm going to die. They're going to kill me. They're going to stone me. They're going to throw stones at me and kill me and murder me. They don't have water. What am I going to do? And Hashem says, don't worry. Calm down. Relax. Just speak to the rock. But Moshe's in such a panic, he takes a stick and he hits the rock. Not once, but twice. And he's like, boom, boom. And he hits the rock. Like, I'm just being dramatic about this because this is what's happening. Like, everybody's screaming at him and he's hitting the rock. And all of a sudden, what happens? Water comes out. Hashem gave it to him. Hashem gave him the water. But you know what happened? That's like a horrible, horrible thing. Hashem says, you hit the rock. You didn't speak to the rock. I told you to speak to the rock. You, you acted in anger. You missed the message of Miriam. I gave you the opportunity to mourn her properly, to take her lessons and to remember. I'm going to listen to Hashem. Hashem is with me. I don't know what Hashem's plan is. I have no clue what he's doing. But I see that Hashem knows. Hashem is doing everything. Hashem runs the world. I have no idea why Corona is here, but I know that I have to listen to what the rabbis say. I'm going to do what's right. Not, be, not what I say. I'm going to do what's right. What the right thing is, not what I feel. What's right. I'm going to do what's right. But Moses misses that opportunity. And we're talking about Moses here, the leader of the Jewish people. He misses, and, and Aaron also. They both miss the opportunity to really truly mourn for Miriam and take the lessons that she taught about having faith in Hashem. And he just panicked and he didn't listen to Hashem. Hashem didn't give him, Hashem told him to speak and he didn't. He, he hid it. And because of that, Hashem said, now you can't go into Israel. There's a consequence to this. You lost faith in me. You can't be in Israel. And you know, Israel is the place where we, where we realize that this, this relationship is up with Hashem. When we're connected to Hashem, Israel is in a good place. When we're not connected to Hashem, Israel is not in a good place. And we see it every single, all the time, even now, especially now we see it. When the Jewish people are in a good place with Hashem, when we have faith and we're connected and we're connecting and we trust Hashem and there's a tr Hashem trusts us and we're the, there's a back and forth relationship, Israel's in a good place. But Moses is teaching us like, you don't have faith. You can't be in Israel. You don't have that, that relationship with Hashem. Israel is not for you. It's so strong. Moses took them out of Egypt. He did so much. He sacrificed so much of his life. His entire life. He like lived in, a, in, in, in the, the, the palace of someone else. Like he couldn't be with his own family. Couldn't have Shabbos with his own family. Like he literally suffered so much. He stuttered. He, he had no friends because of that. He was afraid to talk. He was like, he really had a very hard life. And the Jewish people are constantly yelling at him and asking him for more and more and more. It's never enough. He's never doing enough. For all those rabbis and rebbitsons and leaders out there, you're feeling like everybody's like, oh, it's never enough. The parents out there who, are, who think that the kids think, oh, it's never enough. You could relate to Moses here. You're never doing enough. You're right. You're never going to do enough. The kids are always going to want more. The you know, community is always going to want more. Everyone wants more of you. We're there to teach them that there's a Hashem in the world. And we have to just talk to Hashem and believe like it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to work out. 
and I'm anxious about it, but it's not in my control and I, I'm, I'm letting Hashem take control of this. This is the lesson that Miriam teaches us. Miriam teaches us that when you have faith, there's water, there's sustenance. When you have faith, there's connection with Hashem. When you have faith, you have real meaningful relationships. That's the message of Miriam. Any questions, any comments, any additions, anything to add? Anything? I'll go. Everything good? I it's feel like I'm like not deserving of commenting because I, I haven't been here before, but I'll just. No, you could <laughs> say something. What do you mean? You have something to say? Um, yeah, so I wanted to say that it's such an um, important lesson about, you know, when we conveniently connect with Hashem and when we don't. And it's so easy to think that we have this amazing relationship with Hashem when things are good, but then when bad things happen to us, when we get challenges or tests, um, it's really hard to switch back into that relationship because some of us have grown up with this uh, mentality when we learn Judaism the wrong way that the relationship with Hashem is dependent on rewards and punishments. And if we do good, then we get rewarded. If we do bad, we get punished. And punishment can mean not getting the house we want, not getting the marriage we want, not getting children right away. Like there's lots of different things that we would define as punishments. And so I'll just speak for myself, finding the way to reconnect with Hashem, even when we have extreme challenges. And I had one recently and I had to fight the urge to believe in the mentality of punishment and reward and believe that the reward that I got through that particular challenge, which I'd never had before, was not really knowing the big picture and understanding that Hashem has a big picture. I look at it like kind of like he has the box of the puzzle. He knows what that puzzle is going to look like. I only have the little pieces and yeah. even though I'm trying to force the ones that don't fit, he knows that we, we will figure this out. We will figure out what the puzzle is going to look like eventually. Yeah. And so this was this class. Thank you so much. It was really beautiful. And it really applied oh to me today. Like, I really feel like it was just put my thoughts together around how this is not about the convenience of the relationship. This is about reaching up to Hashem, even when things are bad. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, you. yeah, for sure. And I think that's such a powerful, powerful lesson. I remember like a, a teacher once saying to us, like, we always feel connected to Hashem when we're going through something challenging. But when we're going something through something good, we don't really connect to Hashem. And I was like, really? I don't I feel like it's the opposite. Like when something good is happening, you're like, thank you, Hashem. This is the most amazing thing ever. And when something's bad, you're like, what is wrong with you, Hashem? What are you doing to me? You know? Right. But that's also a relationship with Hashem. It's also it's good to be like not angry, but like to talk like talk to Hashem. I'm really upset. Like, why are you doing this to me? Like, have that relationship. Like, keep talking to him. Like, it's so important to have that open communication. I do that all the time. Like, really, Hashem. Like, I'm having such a hard day. You could give me just a little bit more, you know? Or like in the middle of the night when your kids are like, you know, you you just went to bed and all of a sudden your kid wakes up an hour into your sleep, you know? And you're like, really? Like, Hashem, I did so much for you today. You couldn't do that. You couldn't give me like a little bit of a nice, you know, night. But that's also part of having a relationship with Hashem, you know, and having connection and like, oh, even in the middle of the night to talk like Hashem, like, what are you doing? And then like, try to, try to turn it around. Hashem will help you once you talk to him. But like to even say like, thank you Hashem for letting my baby cry because otherwise I would never know he has an ear infection or thank you for letting me have children that I can, and letting, letting me hear with my kids. I'm like, oh, there's so many things. You could say it in the middle of the night, even when you're exhausted, just to help you get through that, you know? But, um, yeah, for sure. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big battle. And we learn later on after this whole saga with Miriam and talking badly. And she ends up getting like Sarah, she ends up getting leprosy all over her body and the entire Jewish people wait for her. Could you imagine like hundreds of thousands of people wait for one person to continue traveling on? And then they want to, and then all of a sudden, after this whole thing happens, the whole story with the spies happen and they make the same mistake that Miriam makes speaking bad about the land of the, the of land. they speak badly. They speak badly about the land and they just don't get the message. And, it ha and the, the verses come right after each other to show us like, here's the message of Miriam. Don't speak Lashon Hara, don't speak badly. And all of a sudden they just don't get the message, you know? But the thing is that that's so beautiful about this is that the spies, 
want to go, they want, the Jewish people want to go check out the land. It's like, what? Like Hashem just gave you so much and you need to check out the land. Like imagine like someone says like, here, here's a beautiful car. And you say, wait, 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 wait. Um, can I just test drive it? I want to just see if it works. I want to see how the door is open. Like, well, I have to like put my bags down in order to like open up the trunk. Like, that's really annoying. Like, that's what the Jewish people do. The Jewish people actually like start complaining, like, wait, 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 what's Hashem giving? I want to test drive this land that Hashem is giving us. Are you joking? Like Hashem just gave you everything. And now you want to test drive the land. You want to like check it out. Like they sort of like lose faith again, right after the whole thing with Miriam. Like they just lose the, the, the connection with Hashem and Hashem says, okay, fine. Like you want to, you want to check out the land? No problem. Check out the land, check it out, test drive it. You know, like you, you need, you need some more um, energy. You need something to help us have a, a good relationship. You don't trust me. Okay. Check it out. But you know what? That trust is gone a little bit. And then we lose that trust. And then very bad. We end up staying in the, in the desert for 40 years because of that because they just lo lost trust in God. Like we, co we could have been in, in, in the land in one day later. And yet we messed up again. We just, we don't trust Hashem. Like just stop for a second, watch the waters, watch what's happening. Wait, let the puzzles come together. You're not in control over everything. Let Hashem take control a little bit. So yeah. I hope that we have like a beautiful day of like connecting to Hashem and um, I'd just like to take a moment just to like close your eyes even like just to say like Hashem thank you for whatever you want to thank Hashem for or help me through this help me through this thing that I'm going through or help me see where you are in this um, and that's okay to just do that just like to close your eyes and be like I just want to connect with you like how do I connect help me and that's really taking the lessons of Miriam and making it come to life. Like the Torah is not just this ancient thing. It's like really making it real. And that's what really this class is hopefully about. Like really taking it into our real everyday life. Have a beautiful day. If anybody